Well, I, I can't say that I'm surprised. Um, something like this was bound to happen sooner or later, but it's just so sad to see. Well, I was standing in the crowd with Dad when all the people rushed on, which made me really frightened because I didn't really know what was happening at that time. I think really the whole Brighton story should act as a as a kind of a football public health warning. You know, this may happen to your club if you're not careful. Keeping your club alive is often very painful, but is it worth it? Yeah, of course it's worth. It. 1997 was originally thought of by a Plymouth fan. And a Brighton fan living in London took on this idea and thought it would be great. And got a bit of um, publicity through Danny Baker on the radio. And it sort of snowballed from there. Well, the inspiration for Fans United came when I was looking on the internet and through some football pages. And we found the Brighton campaign page, which they'd set up because of all the trouble that they were having at the club with the chairman, like the ground had been sold and... They were going to go out of business and on the page they had messages of support from fans from all over the world, from many different clubs and countries like Germany, Australia, America. And basically as I saw all the different messages of support and it got me annoyed as well, thinking of the way the little clubs are being treated recently. And I thought it would be a good idea if everyone came to Brighton one day to show that Football fans can come together when times aren't that good at other clubs. And um, well, basically, when I thought of the idea, and um, there was a bit where you could submit your comments to the page, and I just put the idea on there. And when it was forwarded onto the page, a guy called Warren Christmas picked it up. Um, when the idea was put onto the internet, uh, the idea of bringing lots of fans down on one particular day uh, was started to be discussed. Um, Gary Crittenden, who runs the unofficial Brighton of Albion website, and I um, thought this was a great idea. Um, basically, we leapt on the idea, um, gave it a name. Uh, we chose a date, which was February 8th, purely because of one of those Premiership games on that day. Um, and literally, the day we discussed it, um, we got on and did something about it. Uh, we wrote to Danny Baker, who was at Radio 5 at the time, um, said that the event was going ahead. Um, and also um, enclosed a guest book from the internet site which had at the time dozens and dozens of supporters' messages. Um, Danny Baker, within two minutes of coming on air that night, um, went onto the microphone and said, this is a great idea, I'm really behind this. Within days, uh, the idea had snowballed, everybody was behind it. Um, within weeks, there was literally thousands of messages on the internet site supporting Brighton's cause and the event. Um, and the whole thing just exploded from there, um, from just a few internet messages and a sort of a, a tiny discussion that had grown into a massive event. Yeah, the outcome was really surprising, actually, when we travelled up there on the day. I was just amazed at all the media attention that it had got and all the people that had turned up.
those that came, it was a wonderful day. Um, probably the first time in their lives that they've stood in a stand with 50 different uh, representatives of other clubs. Also, uh, maybe change the attitude of the club owners um, because, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, club representatives here and they were all saying to the, uh, the management of the time, you know, we know what's going on and we're not going to let it happen to this club. Suddenly we realised that there were fans around the country that really did care, that they cared about football and not just about their own clubs, that they cared about what was happening, uh, about our situation. You can't say enough thanks to the people that came that day because thanks to them Brighton Hove Albion has league status now. Never seen anything like it really, fans from not just all over the country but all over the world converging on the Goldstone. It was a very sort of festive atmosphere, which was quite strange really considering that the club were struggling against relegation and you know their very survival was still very much at stake. Um, I don't think we would have stayed in the league had Fans United not happened. Um, it certainly inspired the, the fans to get behind the team at last um, whilst while, um, the, the new manager came in to reorganise the team. Uh, tactics, but uh, it, it played a big part in that way. To all intents and purposes, we were dead and buried. Um, Brighton were going to be relegated to the Vauxhall Conference. Um, the fact that there was so much interest generated by that game showed the players how much everyone cared. It showed the players how much the, the nation cared, if you like. And it, it was a, just a tremendous day, and I don't think um, it'll ever be forgotten by anyone who was there. I thought the Fans United game was a very moving demonstration of football acting as a family and supporters coming not just from England but coming from Europe as well. I come back to the point, football has got to see itself as a family. There is an interdependence here. Big clubs can't survive without small ones. Small ones need the big clubs to give football the kind of buzz that it's got at the moment. But if we, if we become so consumed with our own club, that we ignore the plight of the clubs that are going through difficulties, then we sell the game short and in the end we destroy part of our own family.
you look at it now, you know, a heap of metal with no, no soul. Um, you know, it's it actually makes me sick. It actually makes me very angry. Um, and there are plenty of Brighton fans that refuse to ever step into this warehouse. Um, there are plenty of fans that refuse to even drive past this development. I don't believe for a minute that the ground had to be sold. Not for one minute. I mean, if someone like Chartwell can come in, buy the place for seven and a half million and sell it for 24 and a half, why the f didn't we do that ourselves? There is no doubt that unless there were particular circumstances at the time, a better deal could have been done. It's very commonplace in property development, especially as in this case the landowner had control, that a joint venture with a developer is agreed, which can be done on a 50-50 profit share basis. If the site was acquired for 7 million and the resultant investment was sold for 24 million, a developer would usually expect a return of 20% which would indicate a profit of about five million uh, in which the club could have shared. It makes me so angry um, that it appears to have been done so blatantly and so coldly. But I think probably at the end of the day we were lucky. We were lucky that there was someone else out there that was willing to take a risk. There's no doubt that for Dick Knight's perseverance and persistence, the outcome at Brighton may not have been quite so positive. The Brighton situation has actually highlighted how vulnerable some clubs are to the money men scouring the game now and the havoc that they can cause. I think the most important thing is with the kind of things that we're doing with Fans United in the heart of football, they draw attention to people in the national media and to supporters of the successful clubs, in inverted commas, the premiership clubs, of what is happening in the lower echelons of the game, that we're fighting for our culture, that we're trying to defend and support our clubs who are threatened by big business, by the money men. Quite frankly, there are too many clubs now being run by, shall we say, slightly unscrupulous people who really shouldn't be dabbling in something they don't understand. They don't have their heart in football. Football is for people and for supporters.